know about you, but as for me, one of the best things in life is hot, fresh pepperoni pizza. In fact, if there was one meal that I had to eat every day over and over again for the rest of my life, it would absolutely, without a doubt, be pepperoni pizza. How about you though? If you had to eat one meal every day for the rest of your life over and over again, what would it be? Why don't you just tell the person next to you real quick. You got about 20 seconds. Ready, go. All right, everybody look back up here. Are you with me? Okay, real quick, I want you to raise your hand if you're kind of like me and you would select pizza as your meal to eat for the rest of your life. Raise your hand. All right, look around the room. All you guys, you're my people. We're gonna grow old together eating our pepperoni pizza and we're actually gonna grow large together eating our pepperoni pizza. pizza. Because let's just be honest, uh, pizza's not the healthiest of options, but it sure tastes good. Um, how many of you though would have chosen like the healthy route for your meal? Like something kind of like a salad, maybe with like some vinaigrette dressing, some chicken, like a really healthy option. If you chose a healthy option for your food, raise your hand. All right, look around the room. If there's people raising their hands right now, look at these people. These are the people that are, that are gonna survive and are gonna rule the world. You guys are awesome, good job. But back to the good stuff, pizza. Guys, I'm so excited because for the next few weeks, we're gonna do something that I've been wanting to do for so long. We're gonna use pizza to help us grow in our understanding of God. Yeah, I totally just said that. We're gonna use pizza to help us grow in our understanding of God. And if I were you, then I wouldn't wanna miss one of the next three weeks because this is gonna be so much fun. And here's the deal. I wanna help you understand where this all ties in. Our whole church for the next three weeks is gonna be looking at a principle together. And this principle is gonna guide us to help honor God with one of the most important resources that he provides. And we're gonna to get to that principle uh, in just a little bit. But for now, I wanna introduce you to kind of the big idea of the next three weeks. And it's, it's really pretty simple. It's that God wants to be first place in your life. God wants to be first place in your life. He wants to be most important to you. He wants to be most valuable to you. Jesus actually said it like this. He said, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first the kingdom of God. But here's the reality. You and I know that there's a big competition going on for first place in our lives. Like, you know that there's friends that compete for first place in your life. There's Netflix, there's uh, computers, there's uh, phones, there's all kinds of things that compete for first place in our lives. And Jesus knows that. God actually knows what competes for first place in your life. But Jesus actually spoke about one specific competitor. And this competitor would compete for first place in all of our lives. He actually mentioned this competitor in the book of Matthew chapter 6. Let me read it for you. It says, no one can serve two masters at the same time. You will hate one of them and love the other, or you will be faithful to one and dislike the other. You can't serve God and money at the same time. Now, Listen, listen to me real quick. Did you catch who the competitor was? Why don't you just whisper it to the person next to you real quick. Who's the competitor? All right, look back up here. It's money. Money is, is gonna battle for first place in our lives. Money wants to consume your thoughts. It wants to consume your dreams. Money wants to sway your decisions that you make in your life every day. It wants to be first place in your life. And according to what Jesus just said in Matthew chapter 6, if we allow money to creep in, to be 
first place in our lives, that just means that there's no room for God. And that is a problem. And I know what some of you might be thinking. You might be thinking to yourself right now, well, well, Jared, this really isn't going to be a problem for me. Because you see, like, I don't have very much money. Like, I don't come from a family that has a lot, a lot of money, or I don't have a job, or I don't get allowance. So money's really not going to compete for first place in my life right now. And listen, that, that's a good point. But listen to me, I want to caution you in this line of thinking, because I actually think that money is beginning to become a competitor in your life right now. Uh, let me explain. I used to have uh, a coach who would tell me uh, this phrase, and maybe you've heard this phrase before, how you practice today determines how you play tomorrow. How you practice today determines how you play tomorrow. He would repeat this over and over again to us, and you know what? He was right. When we'd practice really well early in the week, it would pay off later. When I would work on stuff early in the season, it would pay off when it came time for the season to get into full swing. How you practice today determines how you play tomorrow. And when it comes to money, how we practice right now makes all the difference for what's gonna happen with money in our lives later. So this is so important, you guys gotta hear this. Even though you just have a little bit of money right now, how you practice, with a little bit of money now will help determine if God is in first place later. That's so important, you have to hear that. How you practice with a little bit of money now will determine if God is in first place later. Now, all that being said, I wanna introduce us to a principle that's called the 10 10 80 principle. And this principle is really going to help guide us so that we can keep God in first place when it comes to our money. Now, if you'll notice, 10% plus 10% plus 80% equals, come on guys, you can do this, 10% plus 10% plus 80% equals, right, 100%. And this principle kind of kind of is born from an idea that God owns 100%. God is the owner of all things. I actually want to show you in the Bible how it, how it puts it. In Psalm chapter 24, listen to, listen to what the psalmist says. He says, The earth belongs to the Lord, and so does everything in it. The world belongs to Him, and so do all those who live in it. 100% of everything in the world belongs to God. So the 10 10 80 principle helps us understand that everything comes from God and how do we use what God has entrusted us with. Now the first 10% in the 10 10 80 principle represents what Christians call the tithe. And the tithe is, is really seen throughout the entire Bible. Like from the very beginning in Exodus, all the way through the life of Jesus, Jesus confirms it, that the tithe is a practice straight from God. And what the tithe says for Jesus followers today is that we take the first 10% of everything that we earn and we bring it back to God. The first 10% of everything comes back to God. Now, how do we bring it back to God? Well, we bring it to the local church because the local church is the distributor of God's plans and God's purposes. That's what the tithe is all about. But I know that that can be a little bit confusing. So I actually did something recently to help us illustrate this idea of what the tithe is kind of like. Check this out. All right, so I'm here with Heather and Tatum and this is your lucky day. Um, I have a pizza just for you guys. Dude, I've got a whole pizza just for you. It's all for you, but there's one condition, okay? I would just like the first piece back. Okay. That's easy? Is that cool? I'm trying to do the math. <laughs> what are you doing? Do the math? <laughs> I would like the first slice back from you. Is that okay? Yes, that's fine. Totally fine. No no argument with me? No. I would just like one slice back. Okay, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> Easy? That's no big deal to you? Okay, here we go. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, you get the whole thing. You can do whatever you want with it. Okay, have fun. All right, so maybe it's starting to make a little bit more sense now. Uh, 10, 10, 80. All right, the first 10% is what Christians call the tithe, and we bring it back to God. And I want you to notice from the video that you just saw, uh, as I dropped off a pizza to each one of those students, had 10 slices in it. And when I asked for one slice back, it really wasn't a bummer to any of those students, was it? You know, like when they saw that they were given a whole pizza, they were so excited. And when I asked for a piece back, they really didn't, didn't hesitate all that much, right? And that just comes from the idea that God owns everything. And I want you to know that everything that you have belongs to God. So when God asks for you to give 10% back from him, we should, we should be as ready to give back to God as all those students were ready to give one slice of pizza back to me. And I know that sounds kind of simple, right? But I also know that when it comes to your money, when it comes to my money that we work for, it's not so simple, is it? Like it feels really difficult to give up some of our hard earned money, doesn't it? But listen, I want you to remember that there's a competition going on for first place in your life. And we practice the 10, 10, 80 principle. We practice the tithe so that God remains in first place. That's so important. We practice the principle of the tithe so that God remains in first place. Students, there is without a doubt a competition going on for first place in your life. And the tithe helps us keep God in first place. So how are you doing in this area of your life? Does it need some practice? My guess is, is it probably does. And I would just challenge you right now, as we begin to shift uh, in our experience into our huddles and we talk with our coaches, I want you to have an honest discussion about how you can begin to honor God by practicing the tithe. And I want you to have an honest conversation here and I want you to be real with, with, uh, with whether or not uh, you plan to do that. But listen, if you're a Jesus follower, for those of you who would call yourself Jesus followers, you've been invited by God, you've been instructed by God through His Word to practice the tithe. And I wanna challenge you to begin practicing now. And as we kind of shift in our experience and we move to having group discussion, I want you to have an open and honest conversation with your coach about how you can begin practicing the tithe today. And if you're a Jesus follower, man, I just challenge you uh, to take a step of faith and work in this area of your life, bringing back the first 10% of everything God entrusts to you back to Him. And listen, when you do, I think you'll find that God will honor your obedience to Him. And your practice today will help lead to God being in first place later. So as you begin those discussions, I'm gonna begin practicing eating some pepperoni pizza. Um, don't forget though uh, to come back next week as we continue our series called 100. See ya.